the week with Ben Ellis. This is Switch. So I am here today, uh, thank you, Ben, with the lovely Martin Yates. Hello, Martin. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Yeah, good, you? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, thanks. So we were just having a little chat off, offline about um, your gig, your latest gig at the Dark Horse in Moseley, which was absolutely fabulous. How was that for you? Oh, incredible. After nearly 10 months of not performing since February, it was just nice to get back out on stage, even though it was stripped back a little bit. Usually we're full band, but it was just nice to get back out and see people again, you know? <laughs> yeah, it was it was great, to be honest. I thought the smaller bands kind of made it a bit more raw, almost. Yeah, but yeah. you've got... Yeah, you've got a really powerful voice, so that really came across well. So, yeah, it was such an amazing gig. But how nervous were you? Oh, I was absolutely bricking it. Like, <laughs> that, I'm, I'm one of them people trying to get me on stage is a job in itself. Like, I love the show when I'm on stage and getting into it. But trying to get me onto the stage is, it, is a task. It's a task. Right. It takes a lot of work. <laughs> oh, bless you. So, um, so, look, Martin, as I say, I wanted to do a bit of research. And I stopped myself from doing too much because I wanted to ask you quite genuinely about you and what you do and you as an artist and what your styles are and stuff like that so take me back is it to 2017 when you first started out um yeah. tell me about how it all started and what happened there well I've, i went to a uh, music college in digbeth called access to music and um you learn a lot there about artistry and rehearsal techniques and everything like that so after that I've, i graduated from there and just started writing i didn't necessarily want to be a writer at first i just wanted to sing um, and then I just found, I got myself into some couple of relationships when I was younger and, um, came out of that. And then these, these songs just started to flow within about a six month period. And we'd had about 10 songs by that point. They were just pouring and out. Yeah. All these pouring out. I mean, just like love letters. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so yeah, we did, we did the first release, um, Scars of Your Love. And then we did Fire in My Heart, which did really well. Um, and then I took a bit of a breather just to just to find my sound. Um, and that took me about a year. But now I feel like we've kind of solidified what kind of sound I'll be going down in the future. And stuff. What, what do you think that is? Where, where do you think you're at now with the, with the style of, of your... It's very honest and very raw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was a cautious thing on my part to, to want to do. I really want to be a career artist. And I want to be known for writing good songs that people can relate to. You know, it's definitely pop, but there's definitely some kind of jazz influence and some soul influence that I've kind of been brought up with. So, well, you saying that and me doing your stalking on your Instagram, <laughs> <laughs> I had a look, and you know, you say the influences um, of people like Amy Winehouse, Whitney Houston, Aretha Franklin, and George Michael, which is all of that in a nutshell, isn't it? Pop Absolutely. and soul. Oh, love it. Are you just like the, the, the kind of child of all those? <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> the love child of Whitney Houston and George Michael, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I mean, I taught myself to sing just by listening to Whitney from the age of like five or, five or six years old, I first heard her. Mm -hmm. um, I taught myself to sing those massive songs when just before my voice broke. <laughs> and then I, had to, um, I had to adjust it when it kind of broke and stuff. But then George Michael came into play. And I started discovering Etta James and Aretha Franklin. Amy Winehouse, is she's the artist that I connect with most mm. on a writing basis. She's just so honest and raw and I, I, she speaks from experience. And that's that's what I want to get across, definitely. Yeah, well, um, I suppose she's the person that you would have listened to when you were hitting your teens, kind of. So, mm. you know, and it's always that kind of time they're the biggest influences, aren't they? So draw on that. And yeah, absolutely, Amy's your, your kind of like soul kind of writer as well so um but george michael we can't you can't take away the fact that you've been you know the aesthetic look is very george michael which is up oh yeah <laughs> Got my little, little cross earring my little yeah, quick yeah. <laughs> that's it yeah just need the leather ja jacket now and you know <laughs> just <you're all> <laughs> there. <laughs> now, i have to let you into a little secret because i had one pack posters on my bedroom so i'm a little bit older than you just a little bit <laughs> But Wham was my band when I was younger, till it was about oh. 11, 12. So Love them. nothing They're on there. I know. I was, they were still in their like shorts with, um, you know, the little pink shorts and stuff. And they still, <laughs> yeah, had, yeah. They still credited Pepsi and Shirley. <laughs> <'Cause they're laughs> I, remember, bit, they? <laughs> I was brought up on that kind of music. My dad listens to all that kind of stuff. So I was brought up with that. So I love Wham. Love Wham. See. I am old enough to be your mom, and I'm probably the same <laughs> age as your dad, to be fair, but there you go. Anyway, so getting back to your music. So you were influenced for early on. Um, have you got any, like, 
is your family a big influence? Have you got any siblings that you've got a, an influence from? Or as a parent myself, um, I like to think I'm quite creative, but I'd love, but I've got no talent whatsoever. I've got all the enthusiasm and no talent. So, um, but my son has taught himself to learn the piano, you know, from YouTube, and he's absolutely brilliant. Um, and my my other son is a great artist. So I want, I'm, I'm really keen to know that people who are artists as a profession. Um, you know, what kind of things really influenced you? How did your family help with that support? I definitely got a lot of support from my parents and my surrounding family when I was young um, to pursue singing. I used to go, I have quite a few relatives in Manchester way. Um, and I was always singing musicals and stuff like that when I was a kid. And they would always, always encourage me to do it. Like Sister Act in Greece. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I your, your house was fun at Christmas time. <laughs> oh yeah, I loved it. I'd always have some kind of microphone for Christmas or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely life experience with my family definitely influenced me later on when I was writing. Cause mm. now we're back in writing sessions. Now I'm going back to kind of draw from experience from my childhood and on, on my upbringing and stuff like that. But they've always been really supportive with me. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, and you signed the new the new single, which is Let Your Love, which is absolutely amazing. Well done. Um, how's that going? How's the launch? Obviously, very strange times with launching new stuff because of the lockdowns and COVID and stuff. But how what have you been doing differently, do you think, to try and make sure that that's as, as much a success as possible? Well, the last single that we did was back in November last year, and it was so much easier to go out to radio and do your live sessions and do your interviews in the studio and go out and do your um, single launch gigs and all that kind of stuff. So it was, we were traveling a lot when we were doing the, the last singles, but this time we've had to kind of do everything based online, but the single came at a time just before the lockdown was announced. Yeah, so just. Go out. <laughs> yeah just the day before. Yeah. <laughs> um, Skinny your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> but we were so cautious of how to approach it because mm. I don't want to, I just want to uplift people in this kind of time, you know, it's a, yeah. it's a mad time. And I feel like people need new things to cling on to music wise, definitely. Um, so everything's been online and getting the reaction and engagement because everyone's using social media so much more. Yeah, so it's exactly. easy to reach people now. Um, but I just wish we could go out and do shows and stuff like that. But, you know, we just have to let off for a little bit. I know. And I hate you, you're saying that you were doing your video earlier on in the week, which was again, skin of your teeth just before the new yeah. lockdown. How did that go? amazing it was like it was like an eight hour shoot we started in Birmingham and then made our way to London and fin uh, finished the rest of it um but it was incredible I've used the same guy Chris Brucker who's um Birmingham based um he's done every video that we've ever done he's the only person that I trust <laughs> with my stuff oh. um, <laughs> and he's he's very passionate about my videos and the, the way I like to create and yeah. he likes to accompany that. So it works so well. And it was an incredible. Do you like to direct a little bit at least? You're like, well, this is how I want to look and this is how I want to come across. Yeah. yeah. He always says to me, where's your best side? I'm like, well, I've got a tattoo on here. But then I've got the earring here. Yes. <laughs> so I'd, I'd love someone to say that because they, they just snap me and I'm like, no, I don't like that one. <laughs> it's, it's, graft. it's graft. It's definitely graft. <laughs> oh, that's great. What, what did you say that guy's name was that does your videos? Chris, Chris Brucker. Chris Brucker. Shout out to Chris Brucker. There you go. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask you a question because I get the feeling that you're quite, what's the word? You know what you want, you know? Yeah. And, and as you were just saying, you know how you want to come across, you know how you want to look, you know what, what impression you want to give. So you work with a band. Um, yeah. Is it a four-piece band, three-piece bands? Because there's yeah. two with you at the Dark Horse. Yeah, so we have vocals, guitar, piano, bass and drums. Wow. <laughs> now, now we're introducing um, two backing vocalists, so it's uh, almost a seven piece. <laughs> okay. Seven. So my question to you is, if I was interviewing them and not you, what would they say about you? But what would they say about working with Martin? They'd say it was, I, I'm a control freak. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, kind of got that impression, but no, that's <laughs> I'm, I'm a very laid back kind of guy, you know. Yeah. I, I like to get the, the rehearsals and the recording done, but I like it to be fun. And I hope they, they take a lot of fun out of it. I try and make it as fun as possible for them. Yeah. And they love it. You know, they could have and left you, it at any point. <laughs> well, if it was anything like the Dark Horse, you were all just having such a great time. Such a great time. Yeah. I mean, the guy on the, is it Kajan, the drum thing? The, you know, the yeah. Thing. He, his hands were hurting. He was shaking them in between every song, but he was loving it. And your guitarist <laughs> is great as well. And it was just so lovely. I can't I can't tell you how much I really loved it, honestly. It was so great. Really, really good. Okay. 
Um, let's have a look. So I suppose we've got to talk about lockdown because it is, it's going to be in the history books going forward, isn't it? It's going to be one of those things that we all tell our kids about and whatnot and talk about with relatives and say, well, do you remember when? (laughs) But um, what what are we hoping for the future? Because we can't see a bit of a a light at the end of the tunnel with lockdown at the moment. But what would you like to see in 2021? Let's say Christmas was the deadline. We were all cured and there was no COVID, et cetera. What would you like to happen next year? I wanted to go back to normal, just as it was, you know, with, with <laughs> festivals and being able to see as many people as you like at one time. And mm. I just feel like we're going to have one massive party after this is all done. I know. I just want to hug everyone. So it's a good job this yeah. is a Zoom session because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I haven't hugged anyone I don't know for so long. <laughs> It's difficult because you, you have the urge to do it, but, you know, you have to be careful. I know. Yeah. I mean, especially at work because, um, yeah, we go into the office every now and again and you see people that you haven't seen for months and you do yeah. feel, you know, we are very tactile at work and we do yeah. like to go up and get, and there's like, no, we can't. We're not allowed. But um, oh. I sp- how do you keep in touch with your creatives as well? I mean, I know, like, um, the Dark Horse as well, obviously the lovely no- – Naomi Dawes was there supporting oh, you that right. night and she was fantastic as well. So what the kind of things do you do to keep in touch and to kind of organise these gigs, you know, or do you, you know, um, do any collabs with anyone or do you keep in touch yeah. with them? So the last lockdown where it was like the, the seven or eight weeks, we were basically forced to stay at home pretty much. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> That's how it feels. I, <laughs> I was on FaceTime time with my band twice a week and we'd have a writing session or we'd work out production on new songs or something like that. So we're just keeping everyone inspired as much as possible. Mm-hmm. And I've noticed that I've done a lot more collaboration than I usually would Yeah, because I've been at home. So I've been reaching out to other artists. Me and Naomi are going to do some writing in the future pretty soon. And Ooh, um, I look forward got, to that. Yeah. We've been trying to do it for the past year or so, but it's just never worked out until now. So um, yeah, it's just, it's just much easier to, to reach out because everyone's, everyone's got the urge to, to write and to, to create, do you know what I mean? And you're being forced to stop doing that in a live setting at the moment. So. Yeah, in the live setting. But in one yeah. way, I suppose, it's also giving you a bit of time to concentrate on writing. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of like, it's giving you a bit of breathing space so you can do that, right, okay, you know, I've I wanted to do it for ages, but I haven't had the time just to sit and write and think about it and, you know, put some music together or whatever. So it has given some people that time as well for creatives. But um, yes, I'd love to get back to live gigs and whatnot. That'd be brilliant. So it's a, it's a weird thing because last time, last year, like all year, we was just gigging and touring all year, yeah. and we was do, we did about fifty shows maybe in a year or so, something like that. So to compare that to this year, but this year we got a lot of writing done and a lot of recording and a lot mm-hmm. of the, the the background stuff, you know, to prepare. Yeah single release and everything so it's, it's not been too bad it's the admin have you been doing the admin God, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh, no. that's what i do as a job it's a yeah it's a nightmare okay so um so talk to me about the new single then because we're going to play it after the interview and we're going to as i say we're going to put it on loop on switch so that everyone can hear it because it's such it's a really emotional song and it's written from the heart i can you can absolutely tell that's mm. that's you know that's you talking to us and telling us or not even to us to whoever, whoever it was written for or about um and you're just pouring your heart out there and you're saying you know if this is all it is that's fine let's go with that you know if you're thinking it might grow or something might come of it but you tell me because that's how I interpret it as when I listen to it and I might be completely wrong <laughs> I know not at all you were definitely on the right page um let your love when I was writing it, I was in such a great place. I was dating somebody and it was going great and it was growing and stuff. And then this song kind of poured out in a writing session with another artist called Charlie Hall, who co-wrote the song with me. And um, it's basically almost convincing somebody to to, to fall in love again, (laughs) pretty much. Um, And they're being quite hesitant about it. So you're trying to convince them, you know, if this is all we are, let your love take me home kind of thing. You know, that's the lyric. And, um, the video is a, is a little bit different because to me now the song has a little bit of a darker meaning because the person who it's about is completely gone. <laughs> you know, completely gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't know whether that's <laughs> a good or bad thing. <laughs> I'll be um, after you for credits, you know. 
Oh, <laughs> oh dear, be dear. Um, it's Alan, a boyfriend all over again, won't it? <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, it's just conv- it's a love song, you know, to, yeah. to convince somebody to love you and to convince them it will work out and it'll be great and you'll you'll have a great time, you know. Yeah. I, I think it sounds quite hopeful, you know, it's kind of like we'll it's just go with this at the moment, but hopefully it will it will grow. Yeah, definitely. You know, I was in, I was in a great place when I wrote that, so it, it was a nice feeling to to get that out. And it's the first happy song we've done by ever. <laughs> Uh, so we want more happy songs we do yeah, we love happy songs love happy songs <laughs> yeah we want to feel I, I feel like it's a bit of a, um an end of the night sway song with all your friends you know if this is all we are you know that kind of thing and no honestly and they're the best you know what i mean <laughs> you know we've been dancing to um oasis don't look back in anger for how long now at the end of the night do you know uh, what i mean <laughs> we need a new we need a new anthem and yours might just be the one <laughs> oh I hope so. i'd love that everyone drunk and singing my song i'd love exactly. it <laughs> yeah exactly well love. fingers crossed we get back to that very soon fingers so is crossed. there anything else that you want to tell the listeners about you or your your um art or your you know um, that you want to want to tell them that they might not get off Instagram or social media or, you know, is there anything in the pipeline you can tell us about or any sneak peeks? Yeah. So the, the um, Let Your Love, the new single is definitely the lead single off a project that's coming early next year. Mm-hmm. Um, most likely going to be an EP. I've definitely been delaying it for a while because I just wanted it to be right. Um, and obviously with COVID and everything, you've got to structure it so it's released at the right time, you know, to yeah. get to be um, but yeah, we the video is coming out pretty soon for that one. Um, we've got an acoustic version coming out at the end of November um, for it with the video as well. So there's a lot of content coming um, between now and Christmas. And then the next single will be out early February. So oh, wow. That, and that's a ballad. Oh, oh, it's a, it's a cry. Oh, is it? Oh, cry. brilliant. Get the tissues. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, I'm crying to be gin and sonic. <laughs> <laughs> I just want people to to get the honesty and the, the rawness of it. It's all they're all true. All of the lyrics are true. You know, it's yeah. all from life experience and how I felt about things. And Instagram is a hit and miss because sometimes your personality can come off great or it can come off a a bit bad for some people. You know, I've noticed. But um, I like to be as honest and real and yeah, down to let earth. your music speak for itself. So this 100%. is me. You have to be down yeah. to earth, and I've. I'm one of the most down to earth people, you know. Yeah. Even though the music industry is mad, like what I do for a living is mad, but I just want to be down to earth and for mm. people to connect with what I'm writing about. <laughs> what I'm feeling with the the people that I'm talking to since lockdown started, since COVID was out, <clears throat> and we've all had to kind of pull back on what we do, that is the creatives have adjusted and they are starting to now, you know, um, adapt how they get their music out there and how they connect with their audience. Like I said about social media, I think that's exploded, you know, especially Naomi's very good at it as well. She does her now with Naomi's. You've got a lot of Instagram videos as well. Um, You know, so that kind of thing keeps the momentum, which is great. People people love real people, especially music. I mean, that whole period of the glamour and the icon and everything like that is very much in the past. Everybody wants you to be down to earth and to be real. And I hope that comes across, you know, even though I love my icons, like, like you said, George Michael, Whitney, Madonna, I love it. But um, yeah, I hope I take influence from them and, and incorporate my own honesty. Yeah. Wow. Well, I really think you do. And I'm really, really fingers crossed that you, your single does well. Okay. Um, it's let your love and it's out now. You can get it on all social media and streaming platforms, I should say. Um, and the video is out where? It'll be out sometime next week. Oh, yeah. that soon. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, no, that's good going. <laughs> no, no, that's good because it'll keep the momentum up wearing it because you can't go out and do it live. But yeah, that's brilliant. I look forward to that. Well, Martin mm-hmm. Yates, thank you so much for joining Switch Radio today. Um, thank it's you. been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. As I say, brilliant live as well. So guys, check him out on all the social media platforms as well. He's got lots of lots of photos. <laughs> <laughs> says her who was stalking the other night but um yes that's brilliant so thanks a lot for joining us martin of course it's been great thanks for having me for more great videos from the week make sure you subscribe to our channel it's down here somewhere 
And don't forget, you can catch us on the radio every Sunday between 12 and 2 on FM across Birmingham 107.5, on mobile, on DAB and online. We're made for Birmingham. This is Switch Radio.